And so we go from uh, from England across the Channel over to uh, France and Paris uh, with uh, our good friend from Sanofi, uh, again, the chief strategy officer from Sanofi and someone with tremendous experience uh, in the world of, of understanding digital, not necessarily as a uh, digital uh, evangelist per se, but someone who is a uh, uh, by far one of the leading experts in strategy globally uh, in healthcare life sciences and, uh, and, and with uh, uh, Laurent from, uh, from Sanofi. And um, we will just see if we can get him to put the camera on one second. The video, there it goes. Uh, there we go. I uh, love the, the, the virtual background. Uh, looks very chic and uh, very nicely designed, of course. Paul would have nothing else to do with it if it wasn't well designed. How are you doing, Laurent? I'm doing very well. Uh, hello, Stan. Very happy to be there. Yeah, great to have you on the, uh, the the program today, and really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule and and really trying to help share your perspectives with our audience uh, now and then, obviously on demand on our YouTube channel later about what is happening with uh, adoption of digital technologies in healthcare and most importantly, life sciences, obviously. Um, and, and, you know, tell us a little bit about uh, your background, kind of a one minute, uh, you know, uh, short on your journey. Yes, yeah, so, so the, the, the one minute, uh, you know, over the last uh, 22 years, uh, I've been in uh, two pharma companies, first Abbott and then Sanofi. I studied in Abbott in Paris, but now I'm in Sanofi in Paris in between, uh, I went to Denmark, Chicago, Singapore, and then back to Paris. Uh, you know, I, I, I did uh, most striking, uh, I, I, I did take care for a few years of HIV, both globally and also in Africa. Uh, I spent a lot of time operationally in Russia, India, China. So you can imagine China with digital as well as India, very interesting. Um, and then lately in uh, Sanofi as chief strategy officer, really uh, spending my time on uh, innovation that I see both scientific and digital, trying to get both go at the same speed and then allocate more resource so we can, uh, we can uh, make the change. That's fantastic. And, and let's dive into some of the, the, the adoption questions that we're seeing around healthcare and uh, certainly in, in medicine relative to the, uh, this, this digital influence that we're seeing. If you're a patient, uh, how can digital help you live a better life from what you've seen in the ecosystem? Yeah, this, this, is a, this is a very important question is that uh, we generally see digital as, as helping here or, or helping there. Uh, what I have seen over the last 10 years is that digital tech really now can help a, a patient, I should, I should say a citizen, uh, manage his or her life much better. Uh, because with data, with sensor, with better treatment, in a way across prevention, chronic disease management, and then better treatment, uh, data has really enabled us to make a jump. You see some companies where they can already do that and offer already some, uh, some, some services like in diabetes, uh, you know, uh, when, when you take the the patch glucose meter of, of a company like, like Abbott. If you take uh, you know, chronic uh, uh, disease management, I'll come back to some example we have been implementing in, uh, in, uh, in, in China. And then in R&D, a lot of companies are trying to do what, uh, what, what we do, which is uh, partnering with leading uh, Okino Extensia to accelerate the way we do research. And so within that framework, if life sciences uh, are, are such a massive influencer in how we actually care for patients. The medical technologies that life sciences companies around the world, manufacturers around the world provide, uh, ha, you know, just over the pandemic have saved millions of lives and on an annual basis, whether it's dengue like Sanofi has with the vaccine there or so many different cancer medications uh, and, and whatnot. Um, how, is, how is life science best positioned to lead digital innovation uh, in tech, or is it? It's uh, it's uh, very interesting. Is uh, you would have asked me ten years ago, I would say pharma was watching digital on the side. 
uh, so I would have told you it's, it's really tech uh, driving it. Five years ago, I think Pharma and Sanofi was a spectator, you know, kind of saying it's a priority, let's go, but just, just uh, uh, watching it or, or doing some initiatives on the side of the fundamental research. I think for the last couple of years, uh, you know, Pharma uh, and especially I can speak about Sanofi, there are others, but uh, Pharma and Sanofi have uh, taken initiative to really lead the change. Uh, to, to be completely modest, I, I would say we are probably leader in, uh, in, in the digital journey because we take a lot of initiative to get there. Uh, we still have some way to go to really uh, be where we need to be. Uh, but you have seen, you know, with uh, Oki and Accentia, we really try to uh, speed up the way we do research, getting our uh, research organization being a lot more data conscious, spinning up uh, the uh, identification of good candidates and hopefully getting better candidates that then we can, uh, we can work with. It, it's a very big change uh, with, with data. On the other spectrum, if you take a patient and chronic disease management, we have been working in China with partners to really uh, develop uh, what we call clinical decision support system, which is a totally uh, automized data-driven system that takes all the literature in different disease and guide the doctor uh, with, uh, let's say, what to prescribe based on the uh, uh, diagnostic of the patient. Of course, at the end, it's still the practitioner that uh, makes, makes the decision. Uh, but you see, I mean, it's data is getting at the core uh, of, uh, of, of, of what we do. Uh, that's where I think we are leading on some of these initiatives. We have gone completely away of uh, what, what we like to call shiny objects, uh, only focusing on what uh, delivers outcome. These are just two examples. Um, I think there is another one that uh, I'd like to mention where we are nowhere uh, or nowhere yet is uh, replacing completely the current uh, CRO model that is heavy paper-based and, and physical visit-based. And then people say in five years, it's probably going to be gone uh, with, with a lot more uh, uh, remote and automized uh, monitoring. That is right spot on for sure. And so when you take a look at the uh, some of the digital innovations that you talk about now in terms of staying away from the shiny objects and really moving more toward ones that are offering real value, what are some of the, the digital innovations that you can talk about publicly that maybe there's been public announcement about with uh, Sanofi and, uh, and where, where you've seen that kind of real in innovation take place and that uh, people should be looking at adopting as well as, as, as yourself. You know, there is, there is uh, if, if I take this, this uh, digital and the use of data, uh, I think this one is definitely one I would mention. Uh, there, is, there is this clinical decision support system where, you know, you, you, you take a specific disease and you can do that over like the 20 main ones. Uh, it, it sounds very simple as a concept, but taking the entire literature and, and putting it in a system that can uh, automatically then uh, guide the practitioner based on the input he will give uh, or she will give, um, you know, that is the diagnostic of the patient. I think this one is, 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 is a very concrete example that I'm very impressed, it's very practical. Uh, it avoids any mistake uh, in uh, in prescription, and it makes sure that the practitioner is always like leading edge uh, in its recommendation. Uh, so, so this one is a very big one. I can mention a second example that uh, I'm sure people are trying to uh, use is, you know, when you are in in uh, in therapeutic area like uh, oncology, or you, you can imagine others where you have a lot of combination. Um, you know, the whole search in the literature of the combination that could be uh, the most promising uh, proven, as well as the one most promising uh, based on the scientific hypothesis, uh, you need the computer and the data to basically uh, uh, identify these, order these and prioritize these in terms of probability of success. And only the data and big tech uh, can enable you to, to do that versus the usual advisory board with 20 experts that can only gather so much. So when you do this exercise of data analysis before, it makes, it doesn't replace the advisory board, but it makes the advisory board a lot more compelling. So this is just two examples that are, let's say, borderline uh, uh, 
confidential, but uh, very, very uh, game changing, I would say. Uh, I'll take another one that is more, uh, you know, applicable to uh, to patients. I'm, I'm very impressed, actually, in uh, in neurology, with all the innovation uh, that uh, that allows actually uh, patient stimulation, especially uh, Parkinson or neurodeficient patient, and is really correcting uh, the, um, you know, sometimes it's the trembling or sometimes it's. Uh, uh, for the moment, it's mostly the trembling, and, and some of these patients can walk again normally versus uh, having stable uh, walk. Uh, it, it, it's an incredible uh, change uh, and impacting uh, uh, the patient. So you see the, the data that is more in the lab, and then the one that is applied to patient that is already actually changing lives uh, of patient day to day. Quite, quite amazing. Brilliant. And uh, when you take a look at, uh, you know, you know, look at Sanofi, and just how many different countries uh, you're in, uh, you know, truly, truly a global medicines company. Uh, how digitized is it today? And uh, would you say it's a digital leader? And uh, if you say it's like 20% digitized internally, 50% externally or something like that. And then, uh, and, and would you consider Sanofi to be a, a digital health leader today? I, I would I would say I'll give an answer directly to this one, and then I'll, I'll develop some example. Uh, I, I would consider Sanofi as a digital leader because we are very aggressive on the journey to get to where we need to be. Uh, it's very clear we are not where we need to be yet, okay? But we are leader because we have we have put uh, uh, the, the force and the investment on digital like we do. Uh, many companies do in uh, uh, scientific innovation. Uh, so on this aspect, uh, yes, yes, we are we are leader, uh, but some way to go. The second aspect where we have gone the most in terms of being totally digital, with COVID actually the whole uh, interaction with uh, with health practitioner has been totally digital for sometimes three months, sometimes eight months. So I think this one we have gone uh, we have gone definitely all the way. Um, where we are very aggressive and uh, probably are are a bit uh, are not beyond the the, the fifty percent yet is really a, a development and, and and research organization. We made a lot of progress compared to five years ago, uh, but as I said, you know, replacing the CRO model and research uh, still uh, still some way to go. One last thing I would say is that uh, uh, we spend a lot of time, as you imagine, you know, with uh, our big, uh, our blockbuster, the Pick um, and and our programs in uh, in in oncology uh, to actually look at uh, uh, you know biomarkers, uh, you know bio uh, bioparameter we can monitor on a day to day for these patients so that uh, we can we can gather and collect a lot more data that would then help improve the outcome. I think this, this area is also an area where we need to make uh, progress. So uh, leader, because we are very focused on the initiative, still some way to go because uh, obviously uh, pharma was probably the least uh, digitalized industry uh, five or 10 years ago. Brilliant. And, and again, I think you know the most important thing for the audience to realize is that this is a company that developed a vaccine for dengue, which uh, really is something that harms mostly the, the, the 2 billion people living in the equator and has almost no real profit to it. And it's probably going to be a loser over the lifetime. And, and why it was done was to do the right thing. And we just don't see enough of that uh, done in the vaccine market. Uh, and so thank you very much for that. And again, thank you for your time here today, Laurent. I really appreciate it. No, thank you, Stan. And thank you, everyone. Very happy uh, for that. Don't hesitate if you want to follow with questions on LinkedIn or so on. Uh... Always happy to uh, to follow up. Absolutely, and we'll drop your LinkedIn again into the chat box. And again, for the audience, please do reach out to Laurent and connect on LinkedIn. Good to see you, Laurent. Take care and have a good night. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone. And we have one more book giveaway for everybody. So at your keyboards and get ready. Blank percent of Americans accounted for half of all U.S. healthcare spending. In 2017, A, 5%, B, 25%, or C, 13%, or finally D, 30%. And let's see how many public health students we have here uh, today. And the answer is 
five percent. Uh, so much for the 80 20 rule. We're now talking about the 95 5 rule. That's incredible. It's changed a lot, and I would have gotten that one wrong. Well done, Jerry. And again, thank you, Sherry, for the books and the, the book giveaway today. This is fantastic. And what a great book as well. I think, uh, you know, just having had a chance to review it with you and everything, just exciting to see it come out. And it looks like Alexander, no, it looks like, uh, who was the winner? Uh, Jerry, do we have a winner here for this one? This is interesting, actually. Um, I, wow, we have a lot of people guessing B's and C's and D's. And it looks like Dr. Let's see. <laughs> we have the same winner again. So anyway, looks like someone's cornering the market on the, uh, the book giveaway today. <laughs> we have is starting a dynasty in the uh, trivia competition here. Well done. Uh, prompt on that one. So